the world is chaotic. The future is never clear. Uh, some people spend their time trying to figure out the future and pricing it. I say it's unclear and we abstract from that. So, you know, we just, we just try to look at individual companies uh, and figure out which ones will grow, which one will repay their loans, and, uh, and uh, deal on that basis. Uh, we call that uh, bottom-up, not top-down. The question is, how do you navigate today's complex market without falling into the common traps? The world feels like it's in constant upheaval, doesn't it? Markets crashing, inflation rising, and then there's all this geopolitical drama. So how do you make sense of it all and secure your financial future? In today's video, I'll break down Marx's investment philosophy, what it means for the current market, and how you can adapt. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just getting started, by the end of this video, you'll feel confident in your next move. In this video, I'll break down Howard Marx's latest Bloomberg interview, his latest warning, and why his approach is opposite to that of Warren Buffett, focusing on risk management, market cycles, and the idea of don't get out. But first, let's set the stage for why Howard Marx's warnings matter. When it comes to investing, Howard Marx is a name you can't ignore. With over 50 years of experience navigating market cycles, Marx has built a reputation as one of the most insightful voices in the world of finance. As the co-founder of Oak Tree Capital, managing over $200 billion in assets, his memos are practically required reading for investors of all kinds, from Wall Street veterans to everyday retail investors like you. He focuses on the fundamentals of investing, staying disciplined, understanding risk, and avoiding emotional decisions. In his own words, he believes in looking at intrinsic value and cutting through the noise of speculation and hype. But Marx isn't just about numbers and trends. He's also known for being realistic about what investors can and can't control. In his latest warning, it's a reminder that markets are uncertain and knee-jerk reactions often do more harm than good. Knowing that, now let's look at Marx's latest warning. Market Valuations and S&P Predictions The stock market today feels like it's riding a wave of optimism. But with valuations soaring, how can you determine whether it's time to buy or hold? Marx argues that valuations are high, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should jump out of the market. For instance, when it comes to the S&P 500, Goldman Sachs recently forecasted a modest 3% return over the next 10 years. That's quite a departure from the typical average return of 10%. But even with this cautious outlook, Marx isn't ready to recommend exiting the market entirely. Instead, he advocates for a less aggressive, more defensive stance while remaining invested for the long haul. Uh, I think we would agree that uh, U.S. stock valuations, for example, are on the high side uh, relative to history. That would uh, tell me to be a little ag less aggressive than usual, a little more defensive, but not necessarily to get out. You know, getting out uh, is, is really a big step. Most of the time in my 55 years in this business has been, been a mistake. Mm. Um, either you get out and it goes up, or you get out and it goes down, and you forget to get back in and it goes up without you. So. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of calibrating, in my opinion, your behavior uh, between aggressiveness and defensiveness when things are a little high as they are, a little more defensive than usual. While it's tempting to get nervous when the market is high, Mark stresses that trying to time the market is not effective. He compares it to a game of risk. Get out and you might miss out on the next rally. Instead of focusing on short-term fluctuations, focus on long-term intrinsic value. Look at individual companies and their fundamentals. After all, if you believe in the U.S. economy in the long term, the market will likely reward you. To understand Marx's warning, it's important to take a step back and look at the broader market landscape. With historically low interest rates over the past decade, asset prices have been inflated across the board. As rates rise, the cost of capital increases, squeezing profits and making future growth less certain. This dynamic, Marx points out, doesn't mean you should panic, but it does mean that you should be mindful about where you allocate your money. 
especially because of the current investor overconfidence, mainly in speculative sectors. From meme stocks to cryptocurrency, high-risk assets have surged in popularity, often driven by FOMO, the fear of missing out. While these assets can deliver extraordinary returns during bull markets, they can just as easily lead to devastating losses and downturns. But what about the broader risks? Like geopolitical instability and inflation, which could disrupt this trend. Trump's influence. When it comes to President Trump's influence on the market, things get a bit tricky. Marx doesn't believe we can predict exactly how Trump's policies will impact the markets. As he points out, the president's influence is often limited, and the market's reaction to his actions can be unpredictable. However, what stands out in the current political climate is the synergy between Trump and Elon Musk. Marx refers to Musk's role in the government as a bromance, one that could influence a significant shift in how the government operates, especially when it comes to efficiency. Trump has tasked Musk with improving government efficiency, an area that's notoriously difficult to reform. Musk, known for his innovative approach, could bring real change, but will that translate into market benefits? How are you reading into the president's relationship with Elon Musk, for instance? You know, he's been put in charge of the Department of uh, Efficiency. We saw Trump at um, Musk's event, spaceship, um, SpaceX, uh, just today. Uh, do you read into the potential of perhaps how Tesla might play, you know, might, might gain from that? Do you see the potential of EVs gaining from that? How, how do you read into that? Well, uh, I'm not smart enough to know the answer to that question. Uh, I think that this is a very unusual situation, uh, one we've rarely, if ever, seen before. A, a bromance, if you will, between a president <laughs> and, 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 a, and a founder of a company. Uh, uh, there's no doubt about the fact that Musk is uh, uh, brilliant idiosyncratic. Uh, uh, people have been talking about uh, increasing efficiency in government and eliminating fraud and waste for decades. I don't think anything's ever been done about it. And the question is, uh, I, th I, I assume that what's going on means that Musk uh, will do more about it than has been done in the past. And then we'll get to see uh, whether it works. But, you know, this is just one more thing, which is so unpredictable and indeterminate that I don't think it's worth most investors doing anything about it. So no point piling into Tesla? No, this is no. The, the, the reasoning through which uh, Trump's relationship with Musk and Musk's role in government produces an improved outlook for te Tesla is, is very attenuated. I wouldn't go there. While Marx doesn't see a direct and immediate boost for Tesla from this relationship, the potential long-term effect could be transformational. If Musk's approach to improving government efficiency succeeds, it could lead to broader systemic improvements. This could create a more favorable environment for businesses and even stock market growth in the future. However, Marx is clear that the full effects are speculative and could take years to unfold. Another point of interest is Trump's cabinet picks and their potential to influence market sentiment. While Marx acknowledges that we don't exactly know what the president's policies will be, he does see a general optimism about the US economy's resilience. The market, according to Marx, is still in relatively good shape, but this doesn't mean it's without risks. So while Trump's influence is difficult to pin down and his relationship with Musk is unusual, one thing is certain. The U.S. economy remains strong, though high valuations suggest you might not get the same returns as in the past. Marx advises that investors should stay focused on the long-term picture and continue investing carefully, but don't let short-term noise dictate their decisions. Historically, markets have always been unpredictable. Even seasoned investors can't forecast what's coming next. Think about the past few years alone a global pandemic, geopolitical tensions, and rising inflation. Each of these events caught investors off guard, and yet markets often reacted in unexpected ways. For instance, during the initial stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, many assumed a prolonged bear market was inevitable, only for stocks to rebound sharply within months. This unpredictability, Marx emphasizes, is why he doesn't believe in timing the market or making extreme moves. 
Market timing is one of the most tempting strategies for investors. Buy low, sell high, and you'll win, right? Howard Marks strongly disagrees. He believes that trying to predict short-term market moves is one of the biggest traps investors fall into. His philosophy is rooted in risk management, not fear, meaning investors should view periods of uncertainty as a chance to reassess and recalibrate. You could have said, if you had a great foresight, you could have said in, in 2019, I think there's going to be a pandemic. I'm going to get out. In 2021, you could have said, I think that Russia is going to invade Ukraine. I'm going to get out. In 22, you could have said, I think Hamas will attack Israel. I'm going to get out. You would have been right about the events, but it would have cost you a lot of money. And we, not only do we never know what's going to happen in the bigger world, but we also don't know how the market's going to react. And so to be dogmatic and to say, it's high, I'm getting out, is a mistake. Warren Buffett, who always says it best, says, don't bet against the United States, for example. And, you know... Uh, but Warren our, Buffett has taken money off the table more than $300 billion worth. Why? No, he says, there's nothing to buy. No, that's, Valuations are high. Well, Timing the market isn't about just avoiding financial losses. It's also about avoiding the emotional roller coaster that comes with second guessing every decision. Did you sell too early? Should you have held on longer? So what's the solution? The easy solution for this is to be disciplined and take a long-term approach. Instead of trying to predict what will happen next, focus on consistent investing and diversifying your portfolio. Use high quality assets that can weather volatility and you're less likely to be shaken by temporary downturns. But there are also other opportune markets. When investors think about opportunities, China might not be the first market that comes to mind. Howard Marks acknowledges that many consider it uninvestable. Yet, he sees potential in this often overlooked region, viewing it as a place with bargains abound for those willing to dig deeper. China's economic growth has slowed in recent years, moving from the explosive double-digit GDP growth of its earlier decades to a more sustainable but modest pace. Marx calls this shift the end of the Chinese miracle, as the country transitions away from the heavy reliance on government stimulus. While this change has introduced challenges, Marx believes it also creates opportunities for investors who understand the landscape. China is attempting something very difficult. They had what I call the Chinese miracle. They had 10% GDP growth a year for a few decades when they were coming into the modern era. Uh, a lot of that or some of it was built on stimulus. You can't stimulate your way to growth forever. Uh, they've tried to back off on the stimulus, but that has caused a growth slowdown that they, now they, wanna, they don't want to have the full brunt of that slowdown. So they're trying to kind of calibrate, uh, that's the word I use in many cases, they're trying to calibrate the, the right amount of stimulus to produce a, a good growth, but not an excessive rely on stimulus, and, and, and stimulus sometimes leads to uh, unwise behavior. Uh, uh, it, it's not hard to, get, it's not easy to get it right. Uh, I'm hoping they will. Um, I know they're dedicated to tasks. They understand the importance of 5% e GDP growth. And let me just say, 5% sounds like a slowdown versus, versus 10, but it's a, a hot, well above average growth rate compared to the rest of the world. China's calibrated approach to stimulus reflects its broader goal of balancing growth and stability. Marx explains that while China has faced criticism for its slower pace, it's still growing at a rate well above most developed economies. A 5% GDP growth may seem underwhelming compared to its past performance, but on a global scale, that's impressive. Howard Marx offers a nuanced view of China's economy acknowledging the slowdown from the double-digit growth rates of the past, but highlighting ongoing opportunities for investors. While China faces challenges like over-reliance on stimulus and a weakening property market, its growth, albeit slower, still outpaces most of the world. The GDP growth graph reflects this shift, showing a decline from the high growth years of the early 2010s as China moves from stimulus-driven expansion to a more sustainable consumption-based growth. The drop from peak growth to a new normal signals both internal structural changes and broader global economic trends. The key takeaway is that, even with the slowdown, China's current growth rate remains significantly higher than most developed economies. 
For instance, the recent 5% GDP growth, though lower than past peaks, is still far above the 1% to 2% growth seen in advanced economies like the US or Japan. As Marx notes, 5% sounds like a slowdown, but it's still well above average compared to the rest of the world. This controlled slowdown allows China to address some of its deeper structural issues, like excessive debt in the property sector. These necessary adjustments are often misunderstood by investors, who mistake them for signs of weakness. This reflects a maturing economy focused on long-term sustainability. One reason Marx remains optimistic about China is its relative affordability compared to other global markets. While US stocks are at a historically high valuation, many Chinese equities are trading at significant discounts, including stocks like Alibaba and JD.com. Now the crucial question, what should investors do with all this information? How should they respond to today's volatile markets and uncertain economic conditions, or perhaps other economic options? First and foremost, Mark says don't get out, no matter how bad the market is. The temptation to sell when markets are down is huge, but panic selling can often lock in your losses. The market can be volatile, but it's essential to see through the short-term fluctuations and think about the long-term potential. As Marx points out, stocks are ultimately driven by the underlying economy, and over time, they tend to rise. 